Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Enns. I'm Senior Fellow in Biblical Studies at the BioLogos Foundation. And we're here today with uh, the Reverend Dr. Tom Wright. And we have a chance to ask some questions, some of which we've gotten uh, via Twitter and emails. Uh, and also about a lot of topics such as his recent book, After You Believe, and uh, science and faith issues. So uh, welcome, Tom. Uh, Thank you. Good, good to, to see you again. You. Yeah. Think out loud uh, with us about Adam and how Adam functions theologically in the Old Testament and whether a historical Adam, however you might want to define that, whether historical Adam is central or important for that, let's say, Adam theology. Paul seems to address that very issue in the book of Romans. Maybe you can explain that a little bit more clearly. The letter to the Romans has many, many things going on in it. It's an amazing masterpiece. And at the heart of the first half in chapter five, Paul draws together what he's been saying with a kind of a big picture summary. He's been talking about Abraham and Abraham's family and the way in which the death and resurrection of Jesus constitutes Abraham's family as a worldwide forgiven family. And that enables him to stand back from that and say, now look, as in Adam, so in the Messiah. And so Paul is taking us right back to the big picture of Genesis and saying that that whole problem which started way back has now been addressed and more than addressed. God has actually got the project of Genesis 1 and 2 back on track at last after it had been derailed. Mm -hmm. So for Paul, it is enormously important because he knows that the significance of Abraham's family, which he's been talking about in Romans chapter 4, is not limited to who are Abraham's family, but is to do with what were Abraham's family supposed to be there for in the first place? And the answer from Genesis is clearly to deal with the problem of Adam. So Paul says, this is how the Adam problem gets dealt with. I think Paul says Israel remains the solution. Mm -hmm. So how does Israel remain the solution? And the answer is that the Messiah represents Israel. He does what Israel was supposed to do. That is the inner logic of Romans chapter three. Israel was unfaithful. Is God then gonna say, okay, let's forget the idea of an Israel and do something different? No, God is committed to saving the world through Israel. Mm -hmm. What he needs is a faithful Israelite. So Romans 3.22 is precisely what you've got. God's covenant faithfulness is revealed through the faithfulness of the Messiah for the benefit of all those who believe. That's how that logic works. So the Israel promise is fulfilled, but it's fulfilled in, in the Messiah. And you can see that aspiration. We are called to be the true humanity. And Paul says, no, actually, it's Jesus who is the truly human one, and anyone who is in Jesus the Messiah is truly human. Mm -hmm.